السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله it is the fadl the grace of Allah that once again he has given us the opportunity to welcome and embrace the month of Ramadan this month is a special one this year for us for a number of reasons not least because we have had to endure at least for the last two years various situations when it comes to lockdown so the first lockdown if you remember if you cast your memory back there was no tarawi the masjid was pretty much closed here in our masjid we continued but we only had one the imam and the muqtadi that was it and we had this for the entire month of ramadan it was very sad I've never experienced anything like this in my entire life. And then the second Ramadan last year came. We had it at the uh, because of lockdown and various rules to do a lockdown. It wasn't lockdown, but various rules to do a lockdown. We had to have it at a sports hall so that we could make sure that people weren't at risk. And just when we thought that lockdown was going to go, lockdown came again because of uh, various reasons. But alhamdulillah, inshallah, this year, we hope that we will have Ramadan at the Musalla once again. Uh, it's, it's fascinating that no sooner has a virus, at least for now, disappeared from our radar, we're back to our normal behavior, which is once again killing each other and bombing each other and destroying each other. Mm. You know, it goes back to what Allah says in uh, the story, the narrative in the Quran, when Allah created Adam and the Malaika said, you know, you're going to create this creation. Uh, Bani Adam, human beings, who are going to shed blood. And Allah said, you know, I know best what you do not know. So each and every one of us has something very special, among many things, is that we have moral responsibility. What does moral responsibility mean? If you look at the Malaika, they only do what Allah tells them to do. They don't have any choice in the matter. If Allah says in London, in this area, in London, in this on this street, I want you to drop this many droplets of rain, that's that's what they're going to do. They cannot disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah says this child that's going to be born in Belgium, in this village in Belgium, for example, when you go to him, when you, when you give life or when you go, go to him, he's only going to have this many breaths. No more, no less, right? That's the malaika will do that. Nothing short of what Allah tells them, nothing more than what Allah tells them. But we are special in that Allah has given us freedom to a certain extent. We can make choices. It's a very unique gift. We can either make the right choice or the wrong choice. And we live with the consequences of that. Most people Allah has told us in the Quran will make the wrong choice which makes us immediately from the very few and from the very few who should be eternally grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because I'm assuming everybody in this room was born with Iman in the sense that their parents were Muslims right you were given that gift you did not have to convert to Islam and if you speak to lots of converts like I do to become a Muslim is not very easy. You know, you have to go for a lot of personal turmoil. Uh, the family sometimes disowns you. Sometimes people from the Muslim community don't welcome you because it's, they're suspicious of converts. Like, you know, why is, he, why is this strange person coming to our masjid? Etc, etc. So it's never easy for them. But we are born with parents who are Muslims and automatically we fall into Islam. But at the same time, we should, re we, we should regularly question why we become Muslim. So we have stronger faith. That may Muslim man cue, why am I a Muslim? If you're just going to say, why is my parents, inna wajadna aba'ana kathalika yaf'alun, that we found our mothers and fathers like this, so we just followed it. Now you should be saying, no, I am a Muslim because I thought about it. I reflected upon it. And this is why when children get to a certain age, Parents should sit down with their children, explain to them why Islam is the only way to get salvation, to get into Jannah. 
Mm -hmm. So it's very, very important. And I do believe increasingly as I age and get older, that the more we teach children about Iman yet, the more we talk about Iman, the more we talk about Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the stronger our faith will become and we don't need to worry about all the evil things people tell us about. Of course, they're always going to be that, but if a person has a strong faith because they've been given regular knowledge, then they will be protected by Iznillah Ta'ala. It's very, very important. And Allah give me the tawfiq. Allah give us all the tawfiq. It's our duty as well. And in this community, in all communities, we are responsible. Our responsibility is that we have to take on this responsibility. So let's return back to the month of Ramadan. There is a gate from the gates of Jannah that have been reserved for those who fast. A special door, a special bab for those who fast in the month of Ramadan. There aren't many gates to Jannah, but there's one that those who fast for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will enter through that. What does that mean? Somebody came to me and said, if there's seven or eight or nine, ten doors to Jannah, then how am I going to get through? How am I going to go through that one and this one at the same time? I said, "Bye, that's true. You can go out and come back and go through the other one if you want to. You are increasing your chances of going to Jannah. Uh, you are increasing your chances of going to Jannah because you are doing more for the sake of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So there is a hadith from Sahal bin Saad who says that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Listen to this hadith." It's an authentic hadith. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa said, Fil jannati thamaniyatu abwaab. How many doors are there to paradise? Anybody know? Thamaniya. If you know Arabic, you know. Eight. eight. There are eight doors to, eight doors to paradise. Eight doors to paradise. Minha babun. Out of those eight, one of them is called rayyan. Rayyan. Sometimes people call their children rayyan as well. Yeah, so when you meet them, you should remember the Jannat ka darwaza. Yeah, you, you make sure I get into Jannat. Yeah. So, you uh, summa ar-rayyan. Rayyan is the door. One of them is called ar-rayyan. So maybe it will, it will be written ar-rayyan. La yadkhuluhu illa sa'imun. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, only those people who fast will enter through that door. So on that day, you know, you'll be amongst those people, those few people, you know, uh, Kabi, if you're like me, you go economy class, right? I don't know people here travel class, first class, but I go economy class, I can't afford anything else, right? So, you know, when they announce, train, plane killer, they announce, and then the VIP or first class, they have business lounge and they get priority. And you're just like, you're all there standing there in our, in our queue, lumber queue, you know? And the VIP, they just go into the plane, subsequently, yeah, they, just go, go via, they don't even queue it, they just go into VIP lounge, and VIP lounge say, well, straight into like, the plane. Like more than <laughs> so, <laughs> going is all right. <laughs> so this is what happens. But Bichara, you know, the Garib Muslim, he's like at the back of the queue. But in Jannah, what will happen? We will be those who are running into Jannah, <laughs> at the head of the queue. They come. So in the dunya, we don't care. Do you understand what I'm saying? Who cares if we don't build skyscrapers? Who cares about all of these things? We're not here for the dunya. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, if Allah gives you dunya with success, Alhamdulillah, there's nothing wrong with that. If you're very well educated or you have a very successful business, yes, you should do that, no problem. But the main priority is the akhirah. Because we're not here for the dunya. This isn't the world where we're going to live forever. When you get to Jannah, you'll be at the forefront of every, everyone. In fact, we know in many places that people in the dunya that we didn't even know who they were. They weren't even well established, they weren't well known. But they'll be the first ones to enter Jannah. And I would say, Bhai, how did you get into Jannah this quickly? How did you get above me in Jannah? You're above me in Jannah. Eh? So we don't know whose, whose status is what with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hmm? So this is why also, Going back, another important point is we should always have a good opinion of our Muslim brothers and sisters. We should never cast aspersions or have doubts or spread rumors about them. In our culture today, beyond the Muslim community, 
there's the whole culture of like they cast aspersions, they spread rumors about people. In Islam, we're not allowed to do this haram. Yeah, somebody, somebody comes in, Malana, have you heard this about this brother? Why? What's it to do with you? Does it have anything to do with you? Of course, if it's a brother that's causing fitna and fasad, that's a different issue. But yeah, do your work and have a good opinion. Maybe you saw this, but maybe you didn't know the full story. How often does this happen? How often does this happen? Then we straight away, we fall onto that person, straight away, we just see something, right? but we don't think, nah, maybe I didn't see it right. Maybe there's a good reason for that. Or maybe I don't need to know about it. Mm, this is the way of the Muslims. Huh? There was a, somebody sent a WhatsApp. Uh, I don't watch WhatsApp that much, but someone sent me a WhatsApp video once. Phil, I'm going to send him all my WhatsApp videos, keep him busy. But somebody sent someone, a very famous speaker, public speaker. He was doing a lecture. So he was mentioning in the Bayan. He was mentioning Bayan. I'm mentioning this because it hurt me, because I've had similar experiences. To so Molana Sa is very famous. So okay, I was in, I was in Turkey or something. So um, they, I was in my hotel. Now when you're in your hotel room, you're relaxed. Even when I go home, I'm relaxed. I don't wear jabba 24/7. I don't wear my topi when I go sleep. You know, like I do have like a life. So Morana Saab must have been relaxing in the hotel. So some students came to see him. So Morana came downstairs into the lobby room. So he must have not wore his topi. Uh, what happened? Morana wore his topi. So the students spoke to him and he got recorded like he did now. And he went, he went to certain places. So he went to certain places. You know, imagine the Morana just relaxing like with Easter, like It happens like Easter, just relaxing with the students. You don't have to like, buy, just give him some space. The Morana said, that I got to my room um, and then I forgot about it. When I go back to my home country, I got some messages from certain people questioning me. The Morana and this and that. And the Morana was crying. He's like, I'm out there doing this, that, yeah, the khidma, and this is what they had to find in me. They could not even think to themselves that by he just come down from his bed. He was saying, I was so tired. Some students came to see me. You know, it happens to me. It's happened to me here where I've suddenly turned up without topi. I've once stood here on a musalla, I didn't know I had a topi on. I was just in my own dunya, I was reading a book or something. And I came running, running, and I said, what about the I quickly grabbed one. It happens. People make mistakes. They're insan. But what I'm saying is, like, have good opinion of people. But take it. People make mistakes. Sometimes I might not even have time, time to put my job on because I'm decorating at home. It happens to me as well. Sometimes I have to put this on. This is, this is amazing, by the way, because you can just put this on and go to the masjid. This is, like, the best thing you can buy. You know, you should keep one in the masjid, like you can just jump, share back into your prabhi, you know, dalka. Uh, for you, it's okay because no one's going to put a fatwa upon you. Main khara ho jau, shirt patun mein pehen kar, then people put fatwa upon me, marana hon zo, modern thegur. You know, this, that, the yeah. So, we should never judge people like this. It's very common in our community. Leave it, leave it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so we should also have a good opinion of people. And the best way to do this, the best way to do this is look for good in people. Logo ke under, find the best thing in people. You know, sometimes people come to you and say, Malana, this brother is always like this. This sister is always like that. For the namaz me aaret me. Bhai, mashallah, dari bhi simni bhai. He's got a beard. Mashallah, you know that brother, he prays Quran. You know that brother, he does this. You know this brother, he's very supportive of charity work. You turn it around and say, and then that brother will be like, oh, hey, hey. I was looking at his fault. And I completely miss this good thing that he has that I don't have. Because we should be like, ah, oh, he's got his sifat in him. Allah mujibi wa sifat be. This is the way a Muslim be. And you know, what's the good about this as well? Dunya we benefit. It's good for your mental health as well. Abke dima ke liye, your well-being is very good for your well-being as well. This way is very good. That's just being concerned with yourself and always being good with people. Mm, this is very very important. So anyway, my Nabi and your Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa says that this door of Rayyan is safe for us in Jannah, inshallah. Allah give us the door in Jannah, inshallah. Mm. Allah said, push na chahi ka, Allah give me this door in Jannah as well. In another hadith from Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, man sama Ramadan, this ne roza raka Ramzan me, whoever fasted in the month of Ramadan, imanan, Iman lekar, ye ye yehi hai. 
wa ihtisaban or umid rakkar with this hope that Allah will give me reward for this because you have to have high hopes in Allah kyun nahi Allah mujhe sawab nahi denge why will Allah why will Allah deprive me so having iman and having hopes and aspiration in Allah that Allah will accept this for me ghafir lahu ma taqaddama min dhanbi all your sins are forgiven all your sins are forgiven for 30 days or so you fast small qurbani small qurbani all your sins are forgiven at least the minor ones kabira ke liye you have to do tawbah ab socho bhai think for a second how many sins do we do in a day you know the ulama tell us that at night before you go to sleep you should do hisab that me as a what guna did i do taki i do istighfar uh, we've done so many sins that we don't even remember some of them they look by looking at by thinking bad about people by looking at bad things by listening to bad things how many sins have we done in a day how many right rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam tells us this is the this is the ummah of the muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that all your sins are forgiven then what does the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam say gets better the hadith actually gets better وَمَنْ قَامَ رَمَضَانَ إِيمَانًا وَإِحْتِسَابًا So one is fasting, guna forgiven. Rasulullah also says that whoever stays up, yani they do ibadah. Roza bhi rakhte ho, fir uske saad, they do ibadah as well. Iman ke, with iman, with hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِ All his sins are forgiven as well. So it's like, do the fasting and do ibadah as well in this month. Do as much ibadah as you can. Don't be distracted in anything else. Jitna ho sake ibadah karte raho. Waman qama laylat al qadri imanan wa ihtisaban. Laylat al qadri will come towards the end of the month of Ramadan. But we need to be ready for it now. Abhi se. Isa na ho ke ke Ramadan last 10 days and nobody to worry about a reward of laylat al qadri. I plan this, that, yeah, I'm ready for Eid. I'm partying for Eid. I'm ready for Eid. Nay, nay, nay. Laylat al qadri. Because what happens towards the end of Ramadan? Eid ki tayari ho jati hai. But we need to finish strong. Jo afleet ho dana afleet. Sports afleet. They always tell you at the end you finish strong. You know, you power at the end. So, imanan wa ihtisafan, ihtisafan, ghofila lahu ma taqaddaba min zik. All his sins are forgiven. So, roza rakhna is forgiven. Doing ibadah, your sins are forgiven. And laylatul qad is also important which we will talk about when the month of Ramadan comes and we get draw closer to it as well so this is something to bear in mind as well what are the other rewards for fasting Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says it's reported from him kullu amal ibn adam yudha'ifu al-hasana bi ashri amthaliha I mentioned this hadith yesterday actually when you do a good deed in the dunya how much is it multiplied by minimum 10 excellent minimum you do one good thing Allah multiplies it by 10 what's the maximum Rasul says 700 right from 10 to 700 we don't have time to go into details but if you have sincerity for example then it will increase but there's one deed Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from Allah makes an exception one's an exception to the rule as we say illa song except for fasting fasting there's no there's no upper limit there's no 700 he says fa innahu li wa ana ajzi bihi allah says this is hadith that rasul is telling us but allah saying this that allah kehte hai ke wo mere liye hai he kept it for me because roza fasting is such an ibadah you can't really tell somebody's fasting Really, it's not like namaz. Namaz, you see someone praying namaz, you know he's praying namaz. Someone's giving zakat, you see the money being donated in a chanda box. Someone going for hajj, you know. But for fasting, it's nobody can nobody can know. It's between you and Allah, right? And it's such a secret. It's a secret between you and Allah. It's a secret between you and Allah. Because when you stay hungry, what do you do? You reduce your food, you reduce your drink, and obviously you stay away from, for, for those of us who are married, during the days, we stay away from our relationships, just for the day. What does this do? If you think about it for your body, what it does is it weakens your body, because you're tired. But that's why many of us, like myself, before Asr, we, we like to have a good snooze, right? And then we come to Asr like all groggy and 
you know, I'm still getting my bearings right, right? Why? Because we've had a good sleep. That's also ibadah if you go to sleep with the right intention. But our body is tired. There's also lots of other benefits. When it weakens the body, it means that you're less likely to disobey Allah because you don't have the energy to disobey Allah. Does that make sense? Right? Because your nafs is like, yeah. you, because your nafs is a fire, it's burning. Mm -hmm. What does fire need? It needs coal, it needs wood. Doesn't it? Right? Because that's what nafs, that's why shaitan is fire, because he rises. Yeah? So when there's no food there, there's no energy there, the fire is calm. Mm -hmm. Can you see? This is what Imam Ghazali also says, and the ulama have told us as well. So your nafs is under control. And later on we will talk about shaitan, who will also be restrained as well. So Allah is making it such for us that any distractions during the month of Ramadan is limited for us. So then we can do ibadah. It's beautiful. It's actually very, very deep. The whole month of Ramadan is very deep uh, construct if it comes together. So Allah says, Rasulullah mentions, He's left his relationship. He's left his food only for my sake. Allah says, because you've done it for me, when you meet me on the day of Qiyamah, I'm going to personally reward you. And who can be a best, better presenter of a gift than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You know, when you meet Allah, you'll be like tired. You, you just come from Qiyamah. Think about it, like you'll be so, you'll have been so thirsty, the tension, like nothing like anything you've ever experienced. You know, you just have, you'd have met the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inshallah, and Gautha as well. Like imagine this, you should sit down and do this. Like, you know, I've just been standing on, standing on the day of Qiyamah and it's hot, it's roasting, people are sweating. I've just been to Gautha and now Allah's calling you and Allah's saying, you know, oh, that fast you kept in your life for me. And you're like, oh Allah, yes, 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 I forgot about that. Allah said, I will give you a reward for that. And we don't know what the reward is. That's the beauty of it as well. The ulama say, what is it? We don't know. Because it's a gift, it's a special gift. It's not a gift if I tell you what I'm going to give you. You know, like wedding gifts, nowadays obviously it's different now because sometimes in wedding they tell you what they want. One toaster, one this. It's not a surprise anymore. But the gift that comes as a surprise, I mean, it's very, very happy. My children, when they get gifts, when I get gifts, I take it to home. My children open it for me. <laughs> they're like, that. they want to know. And they're always disappointed because it's usually something to do for dad. Right? So they'll, if it's an utter bottle, they'll say, you know, oh, dad, can I keep it? My daughter, because they always want gifts. That's their nature, mashallah. So, you know, when someone gives me a gift, mashallah, I'm always happy. I make dua for them. And then my children, because I always encourage people to give gifts. That's my, that's my manhaj as well, to give gifts. So, Rasul then also continues beautifully. He explains this. Lissa'imi farhatan. For the one that fasts, there are two moments of joy and happiness. We all love to be happy. Sayyidina, we all like to be happy. We all want contentment. Everybody's looking for peace. Everybody's looking for contentment, dunya, may, whatever, right? Holidays, business, this, that, the other. Rasul says, what are these two moments of joy? Farhatun inda fitrihi. One joy you have, you know when you do iftar, and that, inshallah, I'll have zamzam this year, some brothers, mashallah, are donating, but when that tanda pani hits your throat, <laughs> hi, hi, hi. Yeah, you know, especially when it's been a warm day. You know what I'm talking about, right? And then when you have a kajur as well with it, and some brothers might like to bring other things with it, but I'd be like, ah, I'm fresh now. And you're not even hungry anymore after that. Ajib. I know we eat afterwards, but what's okay. But you feel happy, alhamdulillah, you know what? Pura din rozanaka. And the first few days are the hardest, especially if you've not been fasting in Shaban. Alhamdulillah, when the water goes down your uh, throat and it hits your body, you're like, ah, you know? And Allah, also make dua that Allah Ta'ala, we can keep fasting. Because when you become ill and you're not able to, it's not the same buzz, it's not the same fun, right? So that's the one pleasure. When's the other pleasure you get? So Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa says, وَفَرْحَةٌ عِنْدَ لِقَاءِ رَبِّي The second moment you will get joy is when you meet Allah. So when you're breaking your fast, think to yourself that كِتْنَا مَزَاعَ دَهَيْ Or كِتْنَا مَزَاعَ هُنْغَا When I meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> That's just a taste. Allah is giving you a, a small, tiny taste of like, Ah, oh, mashallah, this is amazing. I've stayed hungry all day, you know? Especially if you've been working well. 
you've been doing a bayan like me and your throat's all dry because it happens every year after a you have to do a bayan and your throat is all dry and you're, like, you're, you can feel it and you're bringing, bringing Quran all day mashallah you know you're really pushing yourself and then like that that water just hits alhamdulillah I can taste it right now actually <laughs> I can feel it right now alhamdulillah I'm looking forward to Ramadan you only think about it you think oh, this is now bring it, bring Ramadan, Ramadan Aja, I can, we can do this. Hmm? And then what does the Prophet say? You know, people when they're fasting, obviously your breath is not always as pleasant as it should be, right? Especially if you're very conscious like me. You know, when I come to the masjid, I can tell people who's been eating. I can smell it. I am very sensitive. You know, someone had a cigarette, I know someone's been smoking in the Muslims because they haven't washed their mouth away. Or someone's had food and they haven't, they've had like something with onions or something. I can sense it very, very, I'm very sensitive. I don't know why I'm very sensitive. When I'm standing on a musallah, that's why we put also a drop of water there to make ishara, that by Torah, you know, look after yourself. Uh, anyway, anyway, by, by the way, attar is also part of a sunnah. Having good smells is part of our religion as well. Uh, we, should, we should prefer to have good smells as well. And it's the best, best gift to give to a brother. It's the easiest one to give. By kiskili, what shall I buy for him? Get him a nice perfume bottle. Get him a high, good quality one. Anyway, وَفَرْحَةٌ إِنَّ لِقَاءِ رَبِّي Then Rasulullah talks about the smell of the mouth. وَلَا خُلُوفٌ فَمِسْصَائِمِ أَتْيَبُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ مِنْ رِيهِ الْمِسْكِ You know when you're fasting, the smell that comes from your mouth is more beloved to Allah than the smell of musk. Musk was like the best fragrance of that time. Hmm? Allah loves it so much because it's the smell of a fasting person who has had nothing to eat for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says, وَالصِّيَامُ جُنَّةٌ Fasting is a shield. It's very interesting. Junna, what is it? What word does it sound like? Junna. Junna shield. What other word do you what does it sound like? Jinn. Jannah. 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 You know in Arabic you'll notice this. That words are very similar and they have similar meaning. Shield is protecting you. Fasting is a shield. And what do you get in reward for that? Jannah. This is one like it's just a small difference, but Junna to Jannah. Shield. But the Prophet then tells us that when you're fasting, and this is a warning for us, don't lose all of this. You know all the things I've just talked about now? Rayyan, Kadarwaza, this idea that your sins are going to be forgiven, 700 more reward you're going to get with Allah. All of these things, Rasulullah has said it, all of these things. And what does he say at the end? By many but don't waste it. Mud waste gunna. What does the Prophet tell us? That don't waste it, right, by using vulgar speech. Behudabat. Don't waste your time. Don't get into football scores or I don't know what people talk about, right? By Ramzan here. Ramzan Kibad will talk about it if it's not urgent. Yani if it's urgent, it's different. Don't use foul language. We say we should be not, not using it. We should not be getting angry. But Ramzan may. This is why in a month from Shaban, now we're preparing ourselves. And Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, don't abuse one another. Sometimes what happens in Ramzan, I don't know what happens to people in Ramadan. There'll be fighting in my masjid. People fight in the month from Ramadan. But we're all fasting. Look after one another. And if somebody comes to you and he's trying to, you know, wind you up, it happens sometimes, brothers, they just can't help it, you know, like, out of all the year you had to find today. Pura sal akipas mokata abi ako moka mela. Right? Then they come to you and they're like, brother, you know uh, this or that or that. But Allah do it after Ramadan. If it's not urgent. Don't fight with me now. I don't want to fight, fight with you. But leave me alone. And if somebody comes to you, Prophet Sallallahu told us, say I am fasting in this soil. Please. Now is not the moment, now is not the time to argue. And you know this idea of inni sa'imun is also to teach us something very, very important. Bara sabak hai, bara bara sabak hai. Hamari zindagi aisa hona chahe ke hum, we are fasting all the time. I don't, uska matlab kya? It doesn't mean that we're physically fasting. That aisa hona chahe ke we're just controlling ourselves. Because Ramzan is a training ground, right? That if we can do this in a month for Ramadan, then why can't we do it for the rest of our life? Now when even someone tries to, it happens, somebody wants to make me angry. Somebody wants to wind me up. In Ramadan, I know I have that control, Alhamdulillah. Then why can't I try and do that for the rest of my life? Huh? And there are so many harms when people become angry. 
you know, we had case, we've had cases of divorce, we've had cases of lots, ex, lots of harms happen in the community because a person just lost control, and it happens. It happens to me sometimes as well because in San, how much can he take sometimes? But we have to train ourselves to control ourselves, and a person who's who's controlling themselves. If you can control your anger, you're like a king. If you can control your anger, you are like a king in this dunya. That's what the ulama tell us. You're like a king. You like you don't need the kursi. You don't need throne. You don't need to be in the palace. If you control your anger, because that's a very strong sifat. Yes, anger should be used sometimes if it's against the hukuk of Allah, and that's also in certain places. But generally speaking, a person should be calm because it keeps your mind clear. When a person gets angry, their mind becomes clouded. Then they just all over the place. It happens to me, it happens to all of us. Allah protect us and give us that strength as well. Uh, so, this is mentioned by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? So, you know, it's just like when you go to Makkah, Namaski, you get more reward, don't you? When you go to Marina, you get more reward. But if you disobey Allah, it also increases. So in the month of Ramadan, the same philosophy works here as well. That in the month of Ramadan, we should reduce things that are harmful to us spiritually, or we should completely cancel them. And the month of Ramadan, we should increase. But what happens for most of us is when Ramadan comes, we receive the announcement, then we start panicking, like, oh, Quran, 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 where's the Quran? <laughs> well, well, where's the Khajur one? Right? Nay, nay, abise. Like, Monday, I'm going to fast if I can. First day I'm going to fast if I can. Torah says, Yara Quran Parunga. I'm going to give Targib to my children. Abisi Ta'alim should be happening at home. Just talking about Ramadan. The Fadail of Ramadan as well. So this is very, very important to bear in mind as well. From the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We'll talk about more next week, inshallah. I think there's been a lot of detail that has been shared. The most important thing is Tayyari, Fikr, and making the most of the life that we have. You know, I'm not getting any younger, you're not getting any younger. We have to think about meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what can we bring to Allah? Hakikat me, the truth is, and you know and I know that we are very weak. We are failures really when it comes to fulfilling the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Because Puri Zindagimi Ibarat Karinga it never fulfilled the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? But we do as much as we can. The kamas come when we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of Qiyamah. There's something that we did in this dunya. Allah ta'ala will show fuzzle upon us. Mm-hmm. Not adab. That's why in our du'as we never ask Allah to be just with us. We never say Allah be just with us. Because if Allah's fair with us, where will we go? If Allah's fair with us, where will you take us? Straight to Jahannam. If you're going to be just with us, straight to Jahannam. Because that's all we deserve. Mm-hmm. It's only Allah's fuzzle. Thalika fadlullah. Allah never says thalika adlullah. Thalika fadl. Fadl is what? Fadl is to give beyond without expecting nothing in return. Just, just, to, for, just for the goodness. This is a sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Insan may come hota hai ke. Insan kar sakti. Insan wants adal all the time. Insan wants justice. Koi aisa adni batla ho mujhe. I'll become his murid. <laughs> huh? Who can be like that. That I don't want anything from anybody. I just want to give, give, give. Lero, sub lero. You will find very few people like this amongst, amongst us today. And there, were, there are people like this, alhamdulillah. But very few, very few who will just give and expect nothing in return. This is a sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah hame esa And this is the greatest sifat. Because the more sifat you have like Allah, the more you will be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see, we're just in learning the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 99 names of Allah. Maybe in Ramadan we'll do it after Fajr or something. We'll go for the 99 names of Allah. 99 names of Allah, uska kya mana hai? We have a, we have a, we have it there. Uska kya mana hai? And how do we bring that into our life? Because the more you aspire to bring this sifat in this life, the more closer you are to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then, you know, who needs anyone when you have Allah? If Allah is your wali, if you are, sorry, if you are the wali of Allah, wali Allah, right? Then who do you need? So Allah make me like this. Allah make us all like this, inshallah, in this blessed month. Who we'll become true Sufiani Kiram, who we'll become true true people who do khidmah for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah protect us from our nafs, which is our enemy. Allah protect us from shaitan who is always waiting, plotting, scheming.
to bring Muslims, bring their communities down. Allah gives peace and contentment in our heart because mm-hmm. many people are struggling with this. When I meet people, they don't. You can tell when you meet them that kuch stability nahi hai. Yeah, so Allah bring that into their hearts as well. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. Subhanahu wa bihamdihi. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdika. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta. Nistakuluka wa natubu ilayk. Jazakallah.